We got some more chicks. And the chickens are extra excited, especially the hens. <laughs> I know you guys are excited. Let's see what we got. Um, Garrett got some ducklings. I'm not sure what this black splotchy one is, but the two yellow ones are uh, peckins. So if you know what breed this is, let me know. And then we've got, I got four silkies which are the ones with the black beaks that you see. And then I got two Polish for Blake because he loves that breed. And then we've got, um, I think it was two Golden Sex Links and one Orpington, like a, a buff Orpington. And then I think these are three Cornish Cross, which we already have a bunch of Cornish Cross, but Kira always grabs them every time they have them. So they're pretty cute. Look at them. This one is a silky. It's probably going to end up being a roo, a rooster, cockerel, because see the splotchy colors on the head? That's kind of how you tell the difference between boys and girls when they're chicks without actually um, checking their vent, is the boys are usually very colorful and they're usually splotchy like that, and the girls are very dull in color, and they don't, um, they're not very vibrant either. So if you're buying chicks and you have to pick from straight runs, keep those things in mind. What do you think? What do you think of those babies? What do you think? <laughs> oh, those are my Crested Cream leg Bars. I love showing the chickens the chicks that we bring in because it makes them want to go broody. <laughs> they start wanting to hatch their own babies. I don't like the guinea to be around them though. What do you think, girl? And the roosters always love having chicks around. They'll, they'll show them how to eat and peck around the ground. Isn't that right, Cooper? <laughs> Decided to let the grow outs come out for a little bit in free range and get used to being around the older chickens. <laughs> They're a little excited. They're probably going to follow us around. <laughs> They're so cute. Some of them are like, I'm not sure, and they keep going back in. Not a single weed under there, huh? No. It's starting to decompose too. It's great. But. Check this out! The first tarot has emerged. I'm so excited. Hey everybody, I want to show you a quick update on the uh, roost out garden that we were working on. And um, this row right here is where we had uh, carrots planted earlier. Um, but we got so much rain, I think we actually washed away the seeds. So I'm going to go back through here and uh, replant some things. Um, and one thing that I noticed um, since we've gotten a ton of rain back here is that this area is a little bit lower than the rest of the area or the rest of our property. So. Um, we get a lot of water that settles in back here. So what I want to do is come in and add some add some dirt, some topsoil. So I'm going to bring some stuff in uh, from a higher part of our property and um, add a little bit of height over here. So that's why I have the, the um, 
hay pulled back and I just I tilled it another time just because it was it was really compacted from all the rain that we've had and I want to give it a fresh start because I want to plant some tomatoes and then a little bit of strawberries over here so now um, I'm gonna go get the, uh, the lawnmower with the tractor on it and um, get some more dirt Should be enough dirt for that row right there. All right, I'm gonna get to putting the dirt in the row. I wanted to mention why I chose that dirt uh, over there in the other yard is because uh, it's a it's a sandy loam and it's mostly sand, and uh, so it's real soft and it drains really well. This area right here has a lot of clay in it, so what I'm trying to do is mix, you know, a top layer of Probably about four or five inches of sandy loam with the clay and that should help the uh, roots stay you know semi dry and the water to actually soak into the ground uh, without um, being in a big puddle when we water so and hopefully over time this will amend the soil and then next year the uh, bed should be a lot more amended and then once the hay breaks down it'll add to another layer of compost on <coughs> on the uh, on the bed so just trying to just trying to make these uh, improve the the quality of the soil over here so here's what i got planned for this area these are perennials, ever-bearing strawberries. And uh, it says a perennial, this tasty variety of strawberry produces abundant fruits late spring through fall. How to grow, plant in full sun, make rows three feet apart, space plants 18 inches or 46 centimeters apart. All right. So my bed's about 18 inches wide. Um, I'm only gonna have one row of these, so I think I'm gonna space these out probably about 10 inches apart. And the reason why is as soon as these things start, as soon as these plants start throwing out uh, sister uh, like runners, I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna replant them. So um, I think I should have enough time and they won't crowd too much. So, uh, all right, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get these planted. One thing I thought was worth mentioning is uh, when planting planting the strawberry, uh, it has a thing called a crown, and you can see it's right there. They call that the crown. So, whenever you plant these, you want to make sure that you plant the crown at ground level. Don't bury it to where the dirt is up on the leaves because it can affect the plant. So make sure you keep this crown nice and and dry or above above ground. So see if you can see this. So, never mind. So there they are. Uh, what I might do later is bring this hay back over into the row to co cover around the plant. And that'll help keep the water in and it'll also help uh, with the weeds. 
And another thing it'll do is help the uh, fruit stay clean. Hey, what you got there? That was supposed to be my kitty. that garlic. It outgrew the weeds, that's for sure. Look how beautiful my irises are right now. I love these. These are super, super special to me because Garrett's dad gave me these irises from his property and he had them planted around a tree like this. So we had this ugly electrical pole. <laughs> so I planted them around the electrical pole, electrical pole so that when I'm in my garden, it'll remind me of him because this looks like his little patch that he had, but they are so beautiful. My favorite, one of my favorite colors for flowers. So the idea is when my kids are older, I'll be able to give them some of these rhizomes so they can have them on their property. Um, or I could spread them to friends and family. I just think it's so cool. And I have several other things in my garden um, that are from him too. Like I have zinnia seeds, like, I don't know, I've had them for four years now. I've seed saved from some zinnia seeds that he gave me. And then all my garlic is from him. And it started off with a small bunch that he gave me and now I have thousands of them. So I grow them everywhere. I just, I love them. So when my kids are older, I'll give them some of those too for their properties. All right, I'm done. I beat the sunset. So um, sun's going down, I'm gonna go eat dinner. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.